Every day, thousands of people seek the help of a licensed therapist at BetterHelp.com. If you're a psychologist, marriage and family therapist, clinical social worker, or board-licensed professional counselor, BetterHelp is the easiest way to apply your clinical expertise online. With BetterHelp, you can focus 100% of your time on counseling. No need to deal with finding referrals, insurance, or billing. We handle it all. Visit BetterHelp.com slash work with us and complete a brief application to get started. That's BetterHelp.com slash work with us. Welcome to the Oh Hell No podcast, where I, Keisha Nicole, delivers a daily dose of passion, purpose, and struggle by interviewing people who are living their best life doing what they love. Here on this podcast, every Oh Hell No moment serves a purpose. Now let's get started with the show. All right, everybody. So welcome to another episode of the Oh Hell No podcast. Today, I have Edson Buttle. He is my family, (laughs) first and foremost. And he is also a retired professional soccer player. And he is now a coach. And we're going to talk about his career and where he is today and where he hopes to go in the future. So welcome, Edson. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Yes. So How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. This is going to be fun. So Edson has like a lot of accomplishments, right? So I'm just going to highlight a few because I am not really well versed in soccer. So you're going to have to help me out here, Edson. But I know that you have played for a number of teams, LA Galaxy, Columbus Crew, Colorado Rapids, and a couple more. Um, you did the U.S. Open Cup in 2002. Um, You were LA Galaxy's MVP um, in 2010. You were a two-time Golden Boot um, recipient. You got to tell me what that is. (laughs) You won a Humanitarian of the Year Award at LA Galaxy, um, Eastern Conference champion, and you are one of only 11 players to have scored 100 goals in Major League Soccer history. That is amazing. Like I realize it now, but as I'm doing it, I'm always looking to get better. Right. So um, you don't realize how far you've come. Mm-hmm. And um, it's like my strength of always wanting to get better is kind of like my Achilles heel, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, I did accomplish a lot, especially with all the players and quality players that came in this league. Yeah. So, you know, it's definitely something I'm proud of out of you know with my family on my back yeah so, um, it take and I didn't do it by myself you know it takes a community that's something that I instill in the kids now and I'm you know very passionate about giving all that experience back to the kids so I want to start off by asking you I know that your dad was a soccer player as well and long before you got here he already had plans for you, right? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, while yeah. being groomed to play soccer as a young person, have you ever dreamt of doing anything else? Like when you were young and you had this soccer and you're just playing soccer because that's what you know, did you ever think, oh, when I grow up, I'm going to be, I don't know, a firefighter or something else? Did you ever dream that? Not really. Um, Army, when I saw Rambo, I was like, oh, I got to give you an army. You know, I had all the G.I. Joes and, right. you know, my, my god brother went to the army. My best wow. friend Omar went to uh, the Air Force. Mm-hmm. We had another friend that went to the Air Force and now he's a cop. So I think I probably would have went into the army with them if I didn't have soccer. Wow. Yeah. So because you have been playing since you were a kid and it is always it's something that you've always known when would you say that you actually fell in love with the sport? Like, was it um, love at first, you know, like interaction? Or did you grow to really love the sport on your own? And do you remember when that happened for you? Um, well, I really got into it. Maybe it was 13 years old. Mm-hmm. And I've always been serious about it. When I'm competing, I think maybe my dad's very competitive. Maybe just being Jamaican, right? We're com- competitive, yes. you know? We mm-hmm. got to win bragging rights and... um Growing up in the, you know, uh, New York, we played basketball, we played uh, street football. You know, sometimes I'll find a soccer game here or there, but I would have to commute to get those games, quality games. Yeah. But it's always about winning, right? It's always about who's better, who's faster. Yeah. You know, it could be a hot day and you're surrounded by your friends and say, let's see who's fast to the, that tree over there. <laughs> so, you know, tag, you know, all these games, I think help, you know, just learn how to compete. And um, it pushes you. It pushes everyone when you're in that setting. Okay. So what would you say is the hardest part 
about training for this sport? The hardest thing, mm -hmm. sacrifice. You know, I think, you know, in the summers, I had no summer job or, you know, those those days where you go to um, Great Adventure. But I've never been a Great Adventure. Wow. But I remember hearing like, uh, you know, Hot 97 at the oh, what is it, Summer Jam. Yeah, I've Summer never, Jam. I've never been to a Summer Jam. You know, I Me missed neither. out on all, all of those. <laughs> right. Like I didn't miss much. Yeah, <laughs> Especially, no, you didn't. <laughs> I definitely was influenced by hip hop culture. Tell yeah. you that. But um, I didn't make it to every event. And um, I stayed on course by going to these, uh, you know, soccer games and tournaments not staying out late knowing i had a game on on uh you know sunday sunday morning mm -hmm. i would you know sleep in on saturday and uh that that sacrifice uh not getting paid you know sometimes oh, i'm not getting paid so who cares i just go tired you know right. but i actually went to bed cuz my dad you know i just don't function right my dad is a person he always he's disciplined i saw him go to bed take it seriously mm -hmm. so i knew for me to reach peak performance you know i would have to make those sacrifices um i didn't learn about nutrition until 2002 okay so um i i wanted to get better um i wasn't getting fit Mm -hmm. And and I was like, why am I not getting fit? I was getting grilled chicken sandwiches from Wendy's. I'm like, it's chicken, right? You right. know, so I'm like, how was I getting fit? But then I learned, you know, the portions and and you know more greens and how many grains and, and, wow. and you know, the protein and that's what helped really refine my game. Because you know, sports is to be successful. It's a game of uh, you know, half a second makes a difference. So you got to be as lean as possible to to really achieve in, in sports. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as an athlete, besides getting hurt, what are some struggles that you deal with career wise? Oh, wow. Um, that's a good question. And I think being a human, you know, I think they build athlete to be this like superhero, right? And mm -hmm. you really don't work on the human side and the compassion and then expressing yourself learning how to engage with with other people yeah. and what that looks like right simplifying i, I know i know you know when I, when I saw older guys you know talking to women and, and growing up they would yo they'll yell hey yo what's mm -hmm. up what's up ma you know what i mean like yeah. it's like, it's like <laughs> I th instead of just saying excuse me how you doing you know right. um and uh, where you from how's your day going you know that's that goes a long way that's subtlety yeah. and um and, and learning how to healthy habits how to, how to get to know someone like you can take a workout class, you know, they say sports um, or, or working out reveals character, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's something that, that I never valued. I always try to engage, you know, other ways that were probably unhealthy. Yeah. But um, that that part was a struggle for me just growing, um, being so young at 18 when your mind is so tender mm -hmm. and you're easily influenced, especially um, when hip hop was big, the golden era. Yeah. You know, the biggies, the Tupacs, the Wu-Tang, Mob Deep, mm -hmm. you know, they, you had to live your rap. So I had to I wanted to be I didn't want to be soft in the neighborhood. Right. And growing <laughs> up in New York, you know, <laughs> you yes, to, you had to live your rap. So um, I think that's the part that I struggle with. But I did it, you know, when I could I didn't go out my way to do it but mm -hmm. but um because i had training i think the training and, and the passion and love for the sport made me able to uh, persevere right. through all of that but those are some of my struggles as a um you know as a teenager or like in my 20s the 20s i say it's, it's a crazy time for anybody you don't know who you are you're trying to find yourself yeah so <laughs> so it's just a part of growing up and um, i think you need those experiences though to um to relate to people because uh, the journey's not about you i said that in the beginning mm -hmm. it's about other people you know so you can connect and um change the mindset with um younger people by going through those experiences everything is perfect you can't really relate or right. you think you know you you you're not supposed to do certain things when people grow up different everyone is at different stages of the journey mm -hmm. so uh you can't really judge but uh, those experiences help me connect with other people um today i love that you said that because um i think that's true like what you said about people look at athletes as this superhero like they're just supposed to be able to get out there and play and just do this sport play this you know and it's like but wait a minute i'm a human being maybe today something happened in my life and i don't you know, I'm not at my best, you know, but no one thinks about that. They just expect, you know, you to perform, you know. So I love that you Absolutely. made that correlation. That's really yeah, good. So it's like it's because you're good in, in the sport doesn't mean you're a good human. The right. two don't go together. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you, you got to grow in that aspect as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what would you say is the biggest misconception about being a professional athlete? Misconception. Um, what's the misconception about athletes? That we're all confident, I would say. 
So a misconception That's is that we're all confident. One. So uh, I didn't know that our training was giving me a inner confidence. Mm-hmm. And there's levels to confidence, and that's holding others accountable, you know, and um, speaking it, you know, integrity, moral compasses needs adjustment, you know, I think yes. culturally. So that's the real true. Uh, that takes mentorship. That's true confidence, you mm-hmm. know, in a person. And uh, the misconception is that how can you be uh, not confident? You know, right. you, you're making money, all the groupies, you know, mm-hmm. you, you know, you can get anything you want. But uh, athletes are very insecure. You, you tell by how they dress. You know, I think clothes gives you a force sense of confidence a lot of them try to dye their hair you know earrings and right. all type of jewelry and, and that tells me where that person is at because you you're good without any of that stuff yeah oh that was a good answer i love that <laughs> <laughs> so you have traveled all over the world playing soccer where was your favorite place to play and why Oh, my favorite place to play. Where would I be? That would be, I like Amsterdam. Amsterdam is nice. I like the fact that the city is like over water. Mm-hmm. You have these, it's very beautiful to me, you know. Um, you know, they had the cafes, you know, the red light district. You know, that was like surreal to me. But um, that's, that's, something, that's something I wouldn't <laughs> indulge in. But, you know, it's just, <laughs> it was an experience. But, but more overall, you know, soccer, they, have, they love soccer. I'm a Dutch fan. Oh, I love okay. the Netherlands for that reason. Um, wow. And, um, that's, the, that, that's probably the best place for me. Okay. Overall, I um, went there once. Yeah. I, I went there once and I was like fascinated. I, and here, this is my thought process. I went to the red light district and I was like, oh my God, I just want to go in and I just want to talk to them. <laughs> like, why are you doing this? How much do you get paid? Do you do like, I wanted to ask them questions. <laughs> Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And this was before I even had a podcast. I was just so intrigued, like, wow, that's freaking amazing. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, my, I think number one, I mean, the first hustle, not number, no, the first hustle maybe was women. It's sad, you know. Right. Um, Man, man is dangerous. Yeah, it's 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 uh, um, mm -hmm, it's crazy. (laughs) (laughs) So I want you to finish these sentences for me. You won't survive professional soccer if. Oh wow! If if you don't get a hold of your uh, sexual desires, <laughs> get so is it is soccer integrity. just like bas- um like boxing? Because back in the day, I dated someone who boxed, and before you could not like indulge before a fight. Like, is soccer similar to that? Or is it so, all yeah, sports? Absolutely, absolutely. I've heard guys that are really good, like legends of the game. They would sleep with people nights before the games. Maybe mm-hmm. some can. Depends on the person. Yeah. You know, so, so um, whatever works for you and the individual. It's not so rigid where you have to stay to this strict diet. You have to, you know, right. work out this amount of time. You know, body levels are different for yeah. everyone. But for me, no, I, mentally, I would, that would defeat me knowing that I did that. Yeah. And um, a, lot, a lot of times it's mental. If you can just not think about it and says, who cares, you know, you right. could probably perform. But for me, no, that, would, that wouldn't work. So that keeps you yeah. um, optimal when you don't indulge for, you know, in those extracurricular activities. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. So you could use that strength right. late in the rounds or late in the game. Right? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, here's another, another one. Make sure you are, so what would make, you say? Oh, make sure, oh, yeah. make sure you are um, blessed, I don't know, prayed up. You know what I mean, make sure you... <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's all I would say. Make sure we do God first. Make your bed. Make right. sure you make your bed in the morning. <laughs> no. <laughs> make sure you are, I don't know, training constantly or I don't know. Prayed up is a good one. I mean, you got to yeah. say your prayers. Say your prayers. And don't ever compromise what? Your integrity. Okay. Yeah. All right. So when you look back at your career, what are you the most proud of? What I'm most proud of, uh, my humanitarian award, I would say. Nice. That's um, that's probably the most. It's about you know, that's giving my free time, right? Giving back, I think helping others. I've always been passionate about that. And Mm -hmm. as a kid, I always wanted my friends to enjoy you know, whatever I'm doing. I didn't want to be that stingy friend, yeah. you know? So I'm like, <laughs> you know, maybe that was my humanitarian work when, before I was a pro. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so, and then it, uh, and understand, I didn't understand the significance of it when I got it, but now I'm like, okay, now when I want to help people, they can't say, oh, you know what, you just want to do it just because, you mm. know, you're retired now and you don't want to make a name for yourself right. doing this stuff. Or I want to post it just for recognition. 
so I have it. That's one of my good accomplishments. My best accomplishments is the wow. humanitarian award. I love that. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when you decided to retire, what was the hardest part of that decision for you? And what part did you feel at peace with? Well, I was at peace because I feel like I turned every stone mm-hmm. in the game. I, I feel like I played long, especially as a striker. Like my position, you, it's very cutthroat because soccer is a low scoring game. Mm-hmm. And um, you you like, you know, you don't have a good season or two, you're out of there, you know. Right. And, uh, and uh, to play for 16 years, went to Europe, made the World Cup, um, you start to see the locker room starting to change, you know? The music's starting to be a little different. The joke is the jokes are a little bit different. I'm like, okay, I'm that old guy now. Yeah. And um and, and then I'm I'm then I'm as a striker, you know, a goal scorer, you're you're on the service end. So the the if you have younger guys behind you, you're not getting the ball where I need to be. I gotta do extra work. And as an older player, you don't wanna do unnecessary running, especially with a um uh the league isn't old enough where we have experienced players here mm-hmm. for me for me to uh, get the service I need with old legs, you know, in a sense. Right. So and, and I and I, I kind of want it. And, and we're not Brazil, so so there's still work to be done with the kids. You know, you, you need players like myself in, um, on the ground, and then you just get a feeling too that it's time to go mm-hmm. um, and, and move on. And that's what I felt. And then when I started feeling like the coaches were expecting me to prove myself some more, I was like. Nah, I, if, the, if the old younger players were making me feel like, oh, they're really good, man. I got to go. Like yeah. then, you know, I, I don't have that story. I just have a story of just the league is changing. Um, I got a feeling like my legs can't just be running everywhere for no reason. Mm-hmm. I, I I feel like I have nothing to prove, and I was content with that. Good, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, because yeah, a, a lot of athletes, I think they probably struggle with that. Have you? Did you watch that um, Michael Jordan um, series that was on? TV? Yes, I did. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, and yes. you saw yeah, how he good. left and he came back yeah. and he I mean, we kind of lived it because I remember those. I remember that because I used to love Michael Jordan. Um, but it was just interesting how he left. Then he came back. Then he went to baseball. Then he came back. Then he you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I know that it's always a struggle to give up this thing that you're so passionate about. But knowing when it's time to go is is key. So I, I think you I think yes. you're good. You're good. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. you recently that. of course so you recently became a head coach for the Westchester Flame Soccer Club what do you look forward to in this next phase of your life in this position well after retiring you know the trans I was in LA you know far from my family mm-hmm. and there's like a corporate realm you know mm-hmm. and um you're in a realm now you're older you're like 30 uh, 33 in the corporate realm you have people that have been in it since they were out of college, 21, 20, you know, and they, they, they have more experience. So it's like a rookie all over again. Right. And uh, you have to learn that game. And, and I didn't realize what I've done, you know, the, how much impact I had on soccer because, you know, it's not, it's not like there's people outside my house picking signs saying, Edson, you did great. You did great. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I realized people on the outside, they don't try to water you down a little bit. Nobody's really trying to build you up or, or they think I, I used to think everyone has the answers, you know, like, Oh, you know, I'm, I'm easy to ask a question. I can ask for help, you know, and um, that that wasn't easy um, at, at the time, especially being far away from my family. And then I've been on the road for so long that I just started to accept that I was on the road. Just keep going, keep going. Yeah. Now that I'm back in New York, I'm like, oh, I need to be around my family. My family has age. There's so many things of significance that um that uh, I missed and that I need to be a part. Of. I got no pictures, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, 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 you know, so it, but, but there's no way of me knowing that. I think God has his way of just working things out. So I, I just slowly started working my way back. You know, I had a, I had a place in Ohio and um, when I got, when I got this opportunity, I let that go. And then I decided to come back here mm-hmm. and um, I'm closer to my dad. Now he has a soccer Academy and he has a, Oh, he's a blue collar work. So he doesn't, He's not, he's a little further than me in social media right now because he just yeah. adjusts to the times, you know. <laughs> but, but I'm always like I'm like back to that. I'm like an apprentice, you know. I look at my dad and I'm saying, you know, show me what's going on, you know. And then yeah. I realize I've been in more environments than he has as a pro, so I need to share that experience and own who I am, mm-hmm. and um and and and, I, and I'm embracing it, coming more into my own, you know, adding value not only to myself but you know, uh, Golden Touch, you know, Soccer Academy. Yeah. Um, started in '94. 
I was working out at a gym all um like every day mm -hmm. with um uh Luke the trainer give him a shout out and uh <laughs> I started to realize that people coming in there knew of Golden Touch they've either they're heard of Golden Touch you mm -hmm. know um know my dad heard of me and then they see me in the flesh and I'm like oh he got a lot of relationships in Westchester you know and and what that meant and then it started to resonate with me and I'm like okay I maybe just need I'm, maybe I need to just step up now and yeah. um maybe this is where I need to be you know and when I see a kid now he's saying oh I went to Rye High School I said oh we used to play against you guys versus me in LA and I meet a kid he's like oh I went to so and so school I'm like cool that's great that's right. awesome it, it go it goes nowhere yeah <laughs> so, so so and then I'm like oh maybe I'm I was the like messenger and I go out there and 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 get all the experience and then I bring value back to my community and um, it just naturally happened that way. I wish I could say, oh, I knew where to go. And just, you know, right. my dad knew someone on the board of the Flames. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had a good relationship with the owner of the team. And before I signed on, they, they uh, we have to see if we like each other. And then I stepped right in there. Season got canceled to COVID. Right. So, oh, <laughs> yeah, God, yeah, so everything put, got put on hold. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. Um, Unfortunate situation for everyone. Yeah, it is. You know, I would say. Yep. And now I get to unpack. You know, I still have things in storage. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a lot, a lot of my colorful sneakers in there. I'm like too grown for that. I got a vintage <laughs> foot now with my age. <laughs> so, no, so stop it. We're still cool. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I'm still wearing my Air Maxes. The rainbow sneakers. <laughs> I got like I can't be wearing like six nine looking shoes on my feet. You know, like. <laughs> well, maybe you're right about that. I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> So now I get to unpack, I get to engage you know, in the community a little bit more and, uh, you know, get to know people and, and still. Because I used to have to travel to go get good games. So mm -hmm. I want to, you know, I, used to, I it takes a community, you know, a strength, conditioning coach, psychologist, you know, nutritionist. I want to have, create an environment, try to create a society within a society in a sense where, you know, I, these kids can grow not only to be soccer players, but good humans first. You know? Yes. And, uh, you know, like health is just a good foundation to excel in everything, you know, so I just want to give the give kids that. That's amazing. While I'm back. That's another thing, too, about when I interview people who are, you know, like living in their purpose and doing what God wants them to do. And it's just how things kind of unfold and connect. And it's like you don't even have control of it. It just happens. Like you said, like yeah. you can't even take credit for it. It's just something that came together. And I just love that. And that's how I feel like, you know, when you're on the right track is when it's you don't have to force anything. So, yes, yes. Right. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And it's about mastering something, too. You know, like you, to ma I, you know, I read Rich, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And you know, it talks about mastering something and then you're never working for money. And, you know, you're never going to get equity in any of these teams. You know, it's yeah. like you play in the league. You know, you're not going to get equity from the Knicks. You're not going to get equity from MLS, you know, and right. and uh, you gain that experience and you instill it in your business. And, uh, you know, I never looked at my dad's business like a Mamba mentality. Kobe, before he passed away, rest in peace, Kobe, mm -hmm. um, he, he's created this a facility where you had everything in one. And uh, I'm like, wait a minute. That's like what my dad does for a living. So now I see a lot of value in that. And I just amplify it now with, with um, adding things that got me to where I've gotten. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. I'm going to have to have him yeah. come on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I tell him all the time. You, yeah, you he right should. on cue, you right on point. <laughs> and he doesn't like the camera. He does like he, see, he calls me the Martin Luther King. You're like the Martin Luther King. I just care about the ball. You know, I don't care what comes with it. <laughs> he is a mess. And he looks great, too. So he'd yes, be fine yes, on I let camera. Him I, know. He, he, I, I, let him, I let him know you said hello. And uh, yeah. he, he always has good things to say about you. you know? Absolutely. Make, make, make you some caramel. Porridge oh my god yes <laughs> <laughs> he makes the best cornmeal porridge <laughs> and banana porridge you expect. Banana. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, all, all the iron in that you know that's like start the day right you know? yes for real so it's okay to eat that that's not too fattening <laughs> nope that's good that's a good way to start the day yeah, okay. yeah he was on point with that we didn't know I was just good right right not realizing that so well, oh you eat that before training cream of wheat oh it's so good yes for you cream uh -huh. of wheat too he makes good cream of wheat and i use the coconut milk now so instead of regular milk because i'm mm -hmm. lactose intolerant but it still tastes good so. Yeah, absolutely. Same here. Yeah, I don't use the red, the red label milk anymore. The whole milk, right? Days are done. <laughs> exactly. Damn, we getting old. All right. right, right. You got to just make the adjustment. You know, it's all good. Yeah. yeah. So, what advice would you give to young people about playing sports in general? Like, do you think that um, 
if they have that in them, they should, it's something that they should kind of, you know, go into, it might help them in their life or what, what's your opinion? Well, sports is you the 1%. I didn't know this, you know, I mean, I kind of didn't know this, but even more so today is that it's the 1% and it's very difficult to make it into the 1%. Mm-hmm. So, um, like I said, a lot of, like, like I said earlier, um, it's a lot of sacrifice that goes a lot of setbacks, a lot of letdowns. Um, you, a lot of, a lot of things discourage you. It's very competitive, but now I get to play pickup games with people that work in the city and they have these jobs in the city and they all used to play soccer, you know? And I'm mm-hmm. like, no, oh, because of soccer. Now I'm getting these relationships and that's, I didn't see that coming, you know? Now I'm like, oh wow, I can't just, I'm actually going to business. It's not a business meeting, but it's like, I don't know who's going to be at this ga- uh, pickup game. Right. And it's all because of soccer. And uh, and people don't like to just be on the treadmill, right? And so 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 they're like, I can get my cardio in a pickup game, or they can do the cardio on a on a treadmill and get the pickup game, and that's where I'll see them, you know. And, and yeah. we would get that bond and relationships. But I wouldn't discourage anyone from following their dreams. Mm-hmm. I would always willing to give my expertise or my advice on if, if I'm, I'm always willing to give a helping hand to get there. But um, I would say be a student of the game. You know, you're always looking ways to get better. Uh, you know, these these are ways that uh, you, you get to the top. You study the greats. And that's what I've done. Yeah. Mm. So how do you define success? Oh, success. That's something I was just talking about this the other day. Success is, um, I think it's a daily practice. I think success is, you know, being content. Being present for a long time, I was a bit codependent where I'm always going out my way for friends and uh, not whether it's, uh, you know, is drinking, you know, casual drinking with friends, you know, late night, whether it was, um, you know, dinners, you know, I, I like making juice, I like blending my own juices, you know, now, now meditation, mm-hmm. yoga, um, I, I think that's a that success piece, you know, um, at peace of mind. Is a success for me. I used to think, oh, you got to get David Beckham money, and, yeah. and that's success, you know. But more money, more problems. And now you don't yeah. know who's your friend, you know. Um, people engage with. Um, I mean, it's probably different for women, but I would, you know, say the same that uh, people kind of gauge their relationship with you by what you have. Yeah. You know, so I'm kind of glad nobody really came to my house like that. Like I was like, hey, everybody, barbecue at my house. I'm the soccer player. You know what I mean? Right. You know, they might come back for it. You know what I mean? And <laughs> so, yep. so so um, now I get better conversations and downplaying, you know, everything in a sense where I wasn't getting those conversations before. I used to wear a ring all the time and, and, and watch it and all this stuff. And I have a smart watch now. So right. I don't buy dumb watches anymore. And, and, and um, you know, I don't wear the earrings and stuff. And I get people engage more, you know, and, and, and subtlety less is more in a sense. So that's, that's success for me. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Look at you dropping these gems on this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) No, seriously, that's good. Absolutely. No, it's family. That is not just me. You know, I I, like family help me. Like I said, it's community. And and things how how you carry yourself. You know, my mom, you know, my stepdad, you know, my sister, my, my dad to help. You know, have me I have humble beginnings, you know, and um, we didn't really value those. Things. Yeah, we like nice things, but right. it wasn't like, yo, you was encouraging me. Yeah, you got to get this. You got to get that to complete me. You just accept me for me. So that exactly. song that, that helped me in the world, you know. Yeah, I'm glad our family's like not to, like, like that. Like to thank you. Thank yeah. you, family. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't say that. I didn't know. I mean, now I get it, but then I was confused. I didn't know what. I was just chasing things it's like a hamster in the arm um, and the wheel. I know. Type of thing. <laughs> yeah. You, I think we all like go through different things in our lives, and then we realize that's why foundation is so important. You know, like you said, our foundation, like it's just solid. So it's good to come back to the foundation and be like. Okay, I got it together now. You know what I mean? Because it's yes, a part yes. of growing pains. We grow and we learn and figure it out. So yes, yeah, absolutely. A lot of characters out there. I tell you, but, <sighs> man. <laughs> I know. I know. So, how would you say you have changed since retiring? And what are your passions these days? Like besides um, wanting to give back, um, is there anything else that you're passionate about and wanting to do? Um, there, well, I probably, 
um, it was a two part question, right? What was the first part? Yeah, the, the first part was, was like, um, how have you changed since yeah. retiring from um, playing? Do you think you've changed much? Yes, I have. I have a lot. Um, I think I'm coming into my own. I'm comfortable in my own skin now. Mm. Like before where, you know, people probably would say, how you were uncomfortable. You weren't confident. And I was very insecure. I, I was uh, very overwhelmed. I had social anxiety. Yeah. Really bad social anxiety where, you know, I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. I don't like going into large crowds. If I, I didn't like going to play, I'm like, man, a lot of people's going to be there, you know. And I'm like and, that, um, too. I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like it? I don't like crowds. Like, I mean, yeah. I'll be at the soca party like, oh, well, you know. <laughs> right. That's me. That's yes, right. Exactly. Yeah. I keep looking. I, I just said that to my mother. And I said, you know, I'm in the party, but I'm always eyes is peeled. You know what I yes. mean? And it's trauma. That's maybe trauma just from uh, the 90s. You know what I mean? Right. The 90s was rough. You know <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, mm-hmm. funny, I'll give you a quick story. And I was in L.A. and, um, you know, one of the times I was out there and I lived there for quite a bit. And I saw guys get up on the chair. Like, you know, you have your couches and you got your table. And they took pictures with their chain out. Yeah. And they, you know, they're flashing their rings and their watches. And I'm thinking, in New York, dudes would have been waiting for them outside. Right. You don't do that. <laughs> Not like that. But it's Hollywood. But the trauma, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that. That should be the furthest thing from my mind. But that's what they do with Hollywood. But you know, right, so, you like they're bugging. Oh right, oh they gonna get you. Right, they, uh, they gonna be. <laughs> that's terrible, <laughs> New Yorkers. That's you right, know. right. Four in the morning, line you up. Oh, yeah, man. but uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but, uh <laughs> but that was uh, yeah, fish is like a fish out of water out there sometimes. But um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, my change by being, you know, back to your question is um, comfortable in my own skin and the social anxiety. And I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. And um, just to have self confidence and, and what that looks like and, and being okay being by myself. And I, and um, being a leader for me, that I, stepping into a coaching role, you have to be a leader. Mm-hmm. And I think the timing of me coming into my own is um, was, was perfect. And, and and because I have to, people are looking up to me to either get a position on the team or just information. Every day I wake up, I'm like, I got to get this information out to people. People need this, you know. Right. And and um, you have to own it and, and know who you are. Mm-hmm. And um, you, you have influence. I think everyone has influence. And um, for myself, you know, I, I want to make sure I'm transparent to two kids and 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 set it a good example because people are watching and, and i understand that more than ever today um okay. and the second question part of the question was uh um is there anything other passions that you want to pursue now that you kind of you know you're done with that part of your career <laughs> you're on to the next thing but you might have some free time <laughs> okay well, i'm <laughs> yoga i'm a yogi i like to be able to be flexible at one point in my life but um mm. but um oh, 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 in a masculine way um, yeah but but uh, <laughs> but, uh, but um but, uh, but an owner but an owner of um a team one day maybe you know um, oh, i think okay. that's something maybe out not on on the field the whole time but, right um, i'll probably want to do that that's one dope. of these days yeah you know? okay put it out there yeah that's right so I was going to ask you about sacrifices, but you talked a lot about sacrificing um, different things throughout your career. So tell us three characteristics that one should have if they want to pursue a career as an athlete. Just like three, boom, boom, boom. If you had to think of three things, like even when you're looking for people or looking at your players, what three things are you looking for? I'm looking to sign, like, Sign the player, I yeah. would say, on the team. Um, looking for personality, like character. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for, um, you know, I guess character and presence, you know, presence. Mm-hmm. And I'm um, looking for uh, professionalism. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking for quality, you know, and his playing ability. So I'm looking for quality, te- technique, you know, that falls under quality. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and um, someone that can execute, like uh, the quality. So the quality enables them to execute. So those three things. Okay. It's probably what I look for. Mm-hmm. So do you feel like you are living a purpose-driven life? Yes, I am. I think, I think we all are. We just got to identify it. <laughs> I think you just gotta we all are. We all have purpose. I'm very spiritual journey. I think I'm on a spiritual journey. You know, I have faith. So I think we all are. Yeah. I feel yeah. like some people are lost though. They need to get you know. 
Um, yeah, the chains were heavy on my brain, so I get it. So I can relate. Like, I think right. I went through that to relate, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I started this podcast, because I was like, um, this can't be my life. Like, God brought me here to just do this. Like, I got to be able to do something else, like, you know? And then mm-hmm. I started thinking, wow, maybe if I talk to people who are living, you know, doing doing passionate work and things that you know god is like kind of saying hey this is your job here maybe i'll figure out what my purpose is so that's why yes. i started the podcast that, so I, that's good to know no that's great that, yeah. that's because there's a lot of people that do important things um to f- enable me to play so i value now how easy people made it for me to play like right. the people that do the work behind the scenes in that oh, corporate realm yeah. so you interviewing all these people of significance plays a huge role and mm-hmm. plays a huge role in society and now you're magna- mag- uh, magnifying that yeah magnifying it yeah yeah and um that's awesome i think and that that inspires other people no, that's exactly <laughs> that is yeah, what yeah. it is in a nutshell so people if you were confused yeah. about what this podcast was about edson just told you <laughs> <laughs> No, you, you do it gracefully. You do a great job, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. No, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So on the Oh Hell No podcast, I always ask my guests to share an Oh Hell No moment that has taught them something or has um, changed their perspective about something in life. And an Oh Hell No moment is a moment where something happens and you're like, oh, hell no. It could be positive. It could be negative. But it's something that's impactful that either you know, pushed you in another direction or had, you know, made some type of impact in your life? Oh, man. Um, I guess um, making the World Cup team, that's probably the pinnacle. Mm-hmm. You know, I go I go the positive route, by the way. I'm going to go the positive okay. route. Cause I could, I, there's so many, you know, down things or bad things that happened in my life, but I overcame those things. But right. on this question, I'll go, I'll go the positive route. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> I like say, it. Making, making the World Cup. And uh, I, I was... In Yale, the last game was in Yale, and they made the decision like 11, 11 p.m. So everybody's just kind of, you know, hanging around, you know, whispering. You could just feel mm-hmm. whispers, just airy. And then my phone rang in my room, um, the hotel room, and um, and the coaches like come down. So I was a part of that twenty-three man roster to South Africa. So wow. I was like, oh hell no! I was like a whole hell no! I can't believe it. Right. Can't wait to call my dad. I walked in. I try to act like I've been here before, but you know, <laughs> can't <tell> I- <laughs> Right. They were looking at me. They was looking at me. Damn, you're gonna give that all, that reaction? You're gonna like go, yeah, hell yeah. Or nothing. Right. No, I'm just gonna gotta okay, be cool. I'm Jamaican. You know, right, cool, right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I was right. going off. <laughs> That's so crazy. That's oh, funny. Man. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah, yeah, I like a good a positive oh hell no too as as well. Cause yeah, yeah. it happens. All right. Well, it was a pleasure having you on the podcast. Please tell people where they can follow you, um, your social media handles, if you have a website, you know, how can we connect? That's awesome. You know, you know I've done the, uh, quite a few Zoom and podcasts over in this quarantine, and no one has told me to do that. And I, every time I get off, I'm like, man, I forgot to give out my, my, my Twitter yeah. and my Instagram and all that. But everything is Edson Buttle mm-hmm. at um, Twitter and um, Edson Buttle on um Instagram and I have a Facebook Edson Buttle as well and um, you'll, you'll see my accounts um, what else is there Golden Touch Soccer if you're in Westchester dot net I think that's um, you know my, I have my website Edson Buttle dot soccer that's, al- that's also up I haven't really announced that yet so this okay. is the first I'm announcing it okay <laughs> so, exclusive yes yes yes, <laughs> yes exclusive <laughs> right um, but yeah that, that was great and I, my, I encourage you to keep doing this I think um, the ownership piece is what's important a person of color especially a woman of color at ownership and um, and controlling her narrative and her destiny uh, really inspires young kids you know it changes yeah. the mindset and it's important you like I said we all have influence and um, you, you definitely influence other kids um, to continue um, yeah, doing this and you. I encourage you to do that yes yeah. yes and that's what we got to change ownership we got to own our platforms right. and not wait for validation yes that's a big thing too that whole validation thing because you feel like if you're not getting recognized by this person or that thing that what you're doing is not valid and that is so false right yes it is yeah hollywood that's hollywood for you like los angeles exactly (laughs) so that's what we have to remember we all have influence i love that edson that's a great quote like it thank you